welcome to another edition of In the Toy Box. Today, we're going to go head to head with Star Wars toys versus Star Trek toys. I'm Matt, and I'm going to be defending the Star Wars toys. I'm Kevin. I'm here to defend the Star Trek universe. Um, I, I have respect for Star Wars, but I, Star Trek is, is much better, and we all know that. Um. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's going to be debatable. Okay. <laughs> It's time for the Intergalactic Feud! Introducing the Star Wars toys. Obi-Wan, Lando, Han, Leia, and Luke, ready for action. And the Star Trek toys. Uhura, Scotty, Dr. McCoy, Spock, and Kirk. On your mark, let's start the intergalactic feud with the star of intergalactic feud, the robot from Lost in Space. 100 people surveyed. Top four answers on the board. What's the most common way to travel through space? On my ship, the Enterprise, we use a transporter. Most. Common. Come on, Kirk. It's spaceships. <laughs> so let's let's get with it. We're going to begin first with the transportation of each of the universes. Correct. Uh, would you like to begin on the Star Trek? Sure. Um, Star Trek first aired in '66, and it was in syndication for quite a few years. Um, so there were no real toy produced produced until um, uh, 1974. But we don't have to worry about that anyways because these toys are from much more recent years. Um, this is the first Enterprise ship from the original series. Um, this is made by uh, Diamond Select. And uh, it's, it's really nice. It, it's electronic as well. So you get some lights, pretty cool. Um, these are all USS Enterprise ships. Um, and that is from the original series and the next generation. So these are all from Playmates toys, which did the majority of the Star Trek figures um, and, and everything beyond. The, the Enterprise is, is very iconic, uh, and it's, it's a nice looking ship. What, and what about yourself over here? What do you got for well, us? Well, uh, Star Wars, does anyone know, knows anything about Star Wars, had many different uh, spaceships uh, in this, in 1977 the movie was produced but the toys were not produced pretty much until 1978 uh, because of the, the demand for toys was so high um, so but they produced pretty much most of the ships that were in the films we have the land speeder that L Luke uh, used uh, on his time on Tatooine uh, we have Han Solo's ship the, the Millennium Falcon which is probably the the fam most famous ship sure out of this whole series and it's it's very similar to uh, the version of the movie it has the cockpit it has a removable panel that you take off and inside you have uh, compartments where they they hid when the stormtroopers came aboard uh, it also has the little table and the little like where they sit and the, the, the table where they play that uh, mock chess game oh, that's cool um, it, ha it has a lot of features and there were, there's probably been like maybe close to a dozen of these Millennium Falcons made different, uh, different versions, versions of yeah. it over the years. This one represents the, the 1995 version of the Power of the Force series that came out.
Uh, now, back to the uh, the ships that you have, or, or what makes the Star Wars ships uh, better than than the Enterprise? Okay. You know, well, the Millennium, Millennium Falcon. Uh, when it did work in the movie, it has hyperdrive. <laughs> so if it wasn't broken, it's got hyperdrive? Yeah, when it's not broken, it, you know, it had the hyperdrive, so... Yeah. Um, Which is comparable to my light speed. Right. right? It's, it's similar. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Millennium Falcon is just a cool ship. It's like, it's like um, I don't know, it's like a camper version of a spaceship. You know, you got everything yeah. you need there. Nice. You know, right. it's, uh, it's fast. And sometimes it has to be pulled by something else because it's breaking down. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no, nothing like that. Well, you, you get you get your two versions. You got your, your you know your camper, yep. and you got your cruise ship. You know, if you wanted to go on a that's cruise, right. you got your Enterprise. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's right. It is a cruise ship, isn't it? Huh? We're, yep. we're 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 taking the luxury route here. Yeah, I, I want to know where the swimming pool is. On, on <laughs> I the, bet there's the some. There's got to be one in there somewhere. Okay, know it all. Think you know your Star Wars from your Star Trek? Well, let's put your fandom to the test. Greedo or Gorn? Which character belongs to Star Wars and which belongs to Star Trek? These two characters and their toy counterparts have something in common. Both of them attempted to attack our heroes from each universe. Space toys evolved from movie series such as Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers in the 1940s. The toys were based on the chapter serials of these popular characters. In the 1960s, Lost in Space and Star Trek made their way onto the TV screen and their counterpart toys made their way into the homes of many children. The Lost in Space robot was very popular. Over the years, the Lost in Space robot has been replicated in many different versions. There were wind-up toys, keychains, and some were represented with lights and sound. Robinson. This robot is considered today as one of the most popular space toys ever produced. Then in the 1970s, Star Wars came to theaters and with it thousands of Star Wars toys. But it did not stop there. Television revived the space series. Battlestar Galactica aired on television for one season only. But there were many toys such as Colonial Vipers and Cylon Raiders with rocket launch torpedoes, as well as Colonial Warriors and evil Cylons whose mission was to destroy mankind. The Buck Rogers TV series returned with Gil Gerard and toys relating to the show were produced. These action figures included Buck Rogers and the Sinister Tiger Man as well as many others. The popularity of space toys continued on the big screen with movies such as James Bond's Moonraker, which replaced the release of For Your Eyes Only in order to capitalize on the popularity of space and space toys. Moonraker featured a version of the space shuttle, in addition to large action figures of Roger Moore as 007 and Richard Keel as Jaws. The popularity of space adventures was reflected in movies, TV, and toys, and continues to this day. Did you know the answer? In Star Wars, Greedo tracked down Han Solo and attempted to capture him from the orders of Jabba the Hutt. In Star Trek, Gorn attacks Captain Kirk and tries to finish off our hero, but Kirk succeeds in escaping from the clutches of Gorn. Wamper Amugato. Which universe did each appear in? Both white, furry creatures with an immense scary appearance. Make your guess. 100 people surveyed, top four answers on the board. Who are the most notorious bounty hunters in the galaxy? I just got a chill and a bad feeling about this. The Fets. The Fets. Two of the most famous and sought after action figures from the Star Wars universe are Boba and Jango Fett. 
Boba first showed up in The Empire Strikes Back. He was the famous bounty hunter who tracks down and captures Han Solo. If you're a Star Wars fan, you probably remember that it was Boba Fett that delivered Han Solo, frozen in the carbonite chamber, to villain Jabba the Hutt. What you might not remember is that the three and three quarter inch action figure of Boba Fett was originally offered free with the mail-in purchase of four seals from the back of selected Star Wars figures. Boba Fett's spaceship, Slave One, was also produced with several different versions of the toy and usually included the Han Solo frozen in carbonite block. When it came to the Fets, it was like father, like son. Boba's father, Jango, was also a bounty hunter. Jango came on the scene in Attack of the Clones, and he too was released in many different sizes and versions, including an electronic figure. Check it out. Don't move, Jedi. Jango Fett was cloned to provide the Republic with an army of skilled clone troopers. And so the clone toy followed. Okay, now we'd like to talk about the crew members of each universe, um, which will encompass the likeness of the action figure in terms of if it looks like the actor that portrayed him. And we're going to start talking about that. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, let's talk about uh, what I got right in front over here. I don't know if you can see, I'll hold one up. These guys uh, are from Playmates Toys. I feel like everyone knows these. They're really small, they're four inch figures. Um, the ones that I have are from the next generation. This is, this is Commander Riker. He's kind of like the, the second hand to um, Picard, the captain. Um, I like these figures a lot. There's not a lot of posability, but, but they're, they're cool and easy to collect and they're fairly cheap, so that's kind of nice too. Yeah. <laughs> and we got, um, Playmates also made these larger figures, and, and as you see here, we got a large Spock right in front of us. These are awesome toys. It's really bendable, really poseable. I think the likeness of these uh, is amazing. They look a lot like them. The costumes are, are really nice, it's all fabric. Um, and and it's, a, it's a good like, uh, recreation of what they were wearing on the show. I have uh, way to the left, if you can see, those are recreated from the Mego figures. That's um, Diamond Select Toys. Um, Mego originally put out an eight inch line. Mego actually started coming out with toys again. And as you can see here, it's a, it's a clamshell box. We have um, Lieutenant Sulu here. Got some pretty cool toys here. Uh, another one that I just picked up is um, this Captain Picard. So McFarland Toy Company, which is uh, another company I really like, just started making these this past year, 2017. And as of now, they have uh, Kirk and Picard out. Super poseable, not cloth clothing, but it looks really just like Picard, if you ask me. This one's cool, it comes with a base. Um, cu a couple of tribbles with it as well. This, these two right in front of me, uh, Jordy LaForge and Riker are from the movie Insurrection. So, and there's over 13 Star Trek films. So uh, if you're a fan, check them out. This is quite a few to pick from. A lot of people don't know that there's that many films. I didn't, I didn't realize that many either. Yeah, there's quite a few. I mean, the show is amazing. And uh, if you like the show, you're gonna, you're gonna love the films too. It's just as fun. Still tied score. And here's the tie-breaking question for Penella with her magic Etch-a-Sketch and her opponent, Maximilian, with his magnetic magna sticks. Ready? Draw or build the biggest animal in the jungle. It's the elephant. They're both right. How do they do it? Etch-a-Sketch draws and writes like magic. Turn the knobs and the lines go up and down and all around. No crayons, no chalks, never any mess. Turn at your sketch upside down and shake and everything disappears. Magnastix builds things magnetically. No nails, no screws, no messy glue. You get over a hundred pieces to make trains, planes, animals, dolls, and pretty designs. Develop artistic and scientific skills with Etch-A-Sketch and Magnastix. They're kid-tested toys from the Ohio Art Company. hi -o. The Wampa tried to capture Luke Skywalker 
and the Mugato, an ape-like creature with rhino horn, jumps Captain Kirk and Dr. McCoy on planet Tyree. Andorian or Walrus Man. Both aliens, both considered enemies of the heroes. Any guesses? So, uh, Playmates is to Star Trek like Kenner is to Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> Kenner produced uh, many uh, action figures in the 70s. They started with a three and three quarter inch figure. You know, as I said earlier, they produced spaceships to go along with those action figures. Uh, they did have a 12 inch figure toy line of approximately 12 action figures that they picked, that, which they thought were the major ones. Um, then later on in the 90s, when Star Wars was rebooted in the toy line, they did the same thing. They started with the small figures and then reintroduced the ships. And then this time, when they reintroduced the 12 inch figure line, they produced well over 100 uh, 12 inch figures. Um, as far as the likeness of the action figures. When it comes to the actors themselves, I, I feel like the small ones are kind of lacking something. Um, this is a, uh, a blown up version. This is a gentle giant Luke Skywalker, and it's pretty much a blown up version of the three and three quarter inch figure. And as you can see, the, the likeness, he, he's okay. He's, he's not terrible. It's not like, I mean, if you saw it, you say, oh, well, that's Luke. Yeah. But it's, is it Mark Hamill? It's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, the small ones, not so much good on the likeness of the character. Again, this is the 70s, this is not today where you have computer generated uh, action figures. Um, as far as the 12 inch, in 1977 I thought they did a great job on Harrison Ford's likeness to Han Solo. This is actually a Harrison Ford uh, likeness from the 70s. Uh, given clothes from the 90s. So this is the Harrison Ford version, which I like, as opposed to the one that they made in the 90s, which, to me, his nose was a little too big. Um, they had several different versions of Han Solo, which, mm, they're okay, but not the greatest. And the Luke on the Tauntaun, which is really cool about that version, is I think it's one of the better versions of Luke made uh, in terms of what he's wearing, in terms of his, his likeness is pretty good. He's got, his face is pretty mocked up from getting into a battle with the Wampa. And his accessories are pretty cool. I mean, he's got his lightsaber, he's got the thing, I'm not sure if they call them binoculars, but it's pretty much, that's what it is. Sure. Uh, he's got the goggles. I mean, it's just, it's pretty cool, uh, the accessories that he has. 100 people surveyed, number one answer on the board. What do you buy? in the Intergalactic Electronic Store. Uh, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Again? Your only hope? May the Force be with you. Okay, I'll say... Space Tech Toys? Now it's time for Space Tech Toys. Toy. 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 An exciting feature of sci-fi toys is what they can do. It doesn't matter whether you're a Star Wars or Star Trek fan, the following segment will take you where no man has gone before, or to a galaxy far, far away. May the Force be with you. Feel the Force flow around you. Always in motion is the Force. You will not defeat me. Hey R2, do you remember C3PO? Play message. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only help. Hey, 
yeah, I do. Do you remember Chewbacca? Do you remember Jabba the Hutt? Dance program. My favorite toy as a child was my uh, tea set. I love my tea set and I love to have imaginary parties with my tea set. But one of my favorite uh, parties was uh, when my dad sat down one day uh, uh, and had tea with me. We didn't have any real tea, but it was an imaginary tea party and I always remember my little tea set uh, as a child. My favorite toy was an aircraft carrier from G.I. Joe. I used to love playing with my aircraft carrier, and it was so big I could put all my G.I. Joes in it. Uh, my fondest memories is playing uh, right after Christmas, putting all my G.I. Joes that I had assembled over the years on this aircraft carrier and making believe I was uh, you know, simulating war with uh, the bad guys. <laughs> but that's uh, the fondest memory I have of my favorite toy, which was an aircraft carrier from G.I. Joe. 100 people surveyed, top three answers are on the board. Who provides leadership and order throughout the galaxy? Jedi's. You must buzz in. Captains. With a multitude of different series in Star Trek, there are just as many captains for each. And like their figure counterpart, all are unique and easy to like. The captain of the original Enterprise ship, Captain Kirk, is portrayed in William Shatner's likeness. A playful and animated captain with lots of wit and charm. The captain of the next generation Enterprise, and my personal favorite, is Captain Picard. This figure is created in the likeness of Patrick Stewart, a no-nonsense captain who is respectful of higher authority as well as being highly respected himself. He always speaks up for any member of crew if the situation warrants it. Captain Janeway of Starship Voyager is presented in Kate Mulgrew's likeness. This courageous captain made the difficult decision to merge her crew and the crew of a nearby ship to help with the survival of both, as her ship was stranded on the far side of the Milky Way. And Captain Benjamin Sisko of the Starship Defiant this toy is presented in the likeness of Avery Brooks, a strong captain who doesn't ever lose his temper, even while dealing with disputes amongst multiple species. Not as well known, and unofficially the first captain of the Enterprise ship, is Christopher Pike, first played by Jeffrey Hunter, who appeared in the original pilot that was rejected. But footage of that pilot served as flashbacks in later episodes of the original Star Trek series. With these toys, your collection will boldly go where no other has. One captain is good, but why stop there? Collect them all, for these commanders are all worthy of controlling any playtime vessel. Dorians are creatures from Star Trek, and they inhabit the icy moon Andoria. Walrus Man lost his arm in a battle with Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was defending Luke Skywalker. Just as it is here on Earth, in space, there is a multitude of strong and important women who are invaluable to the people around them. In the Star Trek universe, we have Uhura, a translator and communications officer in the original Enterprise ship. During a time of racial tension in the 60s, 
it was empowering to many for a strong black woman to have a non-menial role in a popular series. Deanna Troy of the same Enterprise ship served as a counselor. She is half human and half Betazoid. Captain Janeway of the Starship Voyager became the first captain to successfully traverse the Delta Quadrant. She also successfully avoided the demise of her ship and crew among their many run-ins with the hostile Borgs. Seven of Nine, a former Borg drone, joined the Starship Voyager. After many of her mind implants were removed, she became an asset to the Voyager. Most of the women characters in Star Wars have something in common. They are all very strong, mentally and physically. Princess Leia was responsible for hiding the Death Star plans and ultimately destroyed the Death Star. Padme, or Queen Amidala, she was later known as Luke and Leia's mother. Padme fought along the Rebels and Jedis in an effort to defeat the Dark Side. Barriss Othi is a Jedi Knight who leads clone troopers against the Separatist army on the planet Felucia. Shock T is a Jedi Master and a member of the Jedi Council who serves as Republic General during the Clone Wars. These characters and toys both deserve a lot of respect for they are articulate and strong representations of female individuals who deserve a space in the toy box of any child or shelf of any collector to be enjoyed and serve as a reminder to revere the women in our lives who have helped shape each one of us. Star Wars has droids that are skillful, helpful companions. Unique heroes. The charismatic Han Solo is not your typical hero. He fractures a law or two, but in the end he does the right thing. Epic good versus evil story. Luke using the force for good to deliver his father from the dark side. Lightsabers. Light up swords that are powerful and cool looking. Greater toy selection. Small figures, big figures, spaceships, play sets, major characters, and minor characters. Transporters, able to beam people or objects to a specific target location. Teamwork, the crew's ability to delegate and rely on each other. New Worlds, allowing frequent encounters with different species and creatures. The Enterprise Ship, a magnificent working community contained in a vessel. The Toys, built to last generations, much like the show. All examples of why Star Trek reigns supreme. That's all the time we have today for this episode of In the Toy Box. Thank you for joining us. Now it's time to get out of here. I'll go get the Millennium Falcon. Beam us up, Scotty. May the Force be with you. And remember to live long and prosper. <laughs>